Section 4-3, Addition Rule. The main idea in this section is to be able to find a probability of a compound event. The keyword is OR, the probability of an event A or an event B happening is going to involve some addition of some probabilities. Let's start with the definition. A compound event is a way of combining two or more simple events. One of the important aspects of a compound event is that when finding probabilities, it is important that we don't count any value more than once. The addition rule is as follows. The probability of A or B happening is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. But if there is some overlap, we'll need to make sure you don't count this twice. So we subtract out the duplicate in the probability of A and B. Again, we want to make sure we don't count anything more than once. Here's a good graphics with Venn diagrams regarding counting something more than once. Let's start with disjoint events. The diagram on the right shows A and B do not intersect and therefore disjoint. This shows that they have nothing in common. The diagram on the left shows A and B are not disjoint. So in this case, if we're looking at probabilities, we end up counting the intersection twice and we'll need to subtract out this duplicate. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose we collect data from a college looking at 12,000 students. Here's a two-way table that shows a breakdown of their gender and program. Let's take a look at a couple of questions. First, let's select a random student and find the probability that this student is a business econ major or a graphics design major. These two events are mutually exclusive. So, we see that the intersection is zero and we have a slightly modified addition rule. We find the probability of each event by looking at the sum totals in the table. The probability of selecting a business econ major is 925 over 12,000. There are 202 graphic design majors, so the numerator for our next probability is 202. Then we get this expression. After some simple calculations, we get 0 0.0939. So if we select a person from the school, the probability that this person is a business econ major or a graphics design major is about 9%. Let's take a look at the next example where we're looking at the probability that we select a male or a culinary arts major. Now in this case, these events are not disjoint, so there's an overlap that we need to subtract out. The first two probabilities are just like how we worked out the first problem. But now, we find that there are 94 students that we counted twice from the totals. So we need to subtract this out. Finally, some simple arithmetic will get us our result. If we randomly select a student, there is about a 51% chance that we select a male or a culinary arts major. One last idea is the complement of an event. If A is an event in a simple sample space, then A bar is everything else in the sample space that does not include A. So necessarily, a and A bar are disjoint. A Venn diagram would also be helpful in visualizing this idea. Further, we can use this diagram to establish some simple probability rules. That is, the sum of the probabilities of A and A bar, 
since they make up all of the sample space, must equal to 1. That brings us to a couple of other simple relationships that might be useful for finding probabilities. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose we want to find the probability that we randomly select a student who is not an arts science major. Using the complement formula, we see that we can just find the probability that we select an arts science major, then subtract this from 100%. We identify the values on the table and create our expression. One way to carry out the calculations is to find common denominators and subtract. Then you get your result. The conclusion is that if we select a student at random, the probability that we select a student who is not an arts science major is about 25%. This is the end of 4-3.